follow you Lord in Jesus wonderful name we are praying welcome your neighbors to your right to your left and take your seat gorgeously in your father's presence welcome 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 are you still welcoming somebody out there assure your neighbor you will encounter God in a new way today amen if you can please join me give a big hand to the Lord welcome to 2021 your year of supernatural turn around it's my joy to welcome you to this encounter with destiny service it's also our special communion service and what we do at the communion table is to partake of the nature of Christ spirit soul and body by this communion table this morning you will be operating at the supernatural realm of Christ I thought I'm praying for someone here Jesus was strong in the spirit by this communion you become stronger in the spirit Jesus was sharp in his mind by this communion today your mental faculty will come alive he was physically agile to carry out his duty by this communion everything tormenting your body sickness disease all kinds of affliction terminal and temporal momentary sickness and diseases they are taken out of you today just like that lady came last sunday according to her testimony she used to be restless sleeplessness and suddenly the word of the lord the word of the lord not the word of a pastor went and met her and now she's sharing her testimony by this time next sunday someone seated somewhere here will jump on this altar to share his or her testimony the prophetic focus for the month is the lord is my shepherd i shall not want you cannot be following god and end your journey in lack and want every lack and want is over in your life our teaching series every sunday this being part 2a is caption understanding how god leads isaiah chapter 59 verse 8 is our guiding scripture for this teaching the way the way god is a god of ways of peace they know not the way and there is no judgment in their goings they have made for themselves crooked paths whosoever goeth in the way they made for themselves shall not know peace god is a god of ways he made his known ways known unto moses and his act to the children of israel psalm 103 verse 7 those who know the way are the ones who will command the acts god is a god of ways that means he's a god of methods he's a god of processes and procedures simple if you know what i know you will see what i see if you follow what he shows me to follow you will arrive at where i am everything about god is open available to all who care to follow the process understanding how god leads but understanding comes via learning that's why jesus said come and learn to understand the way to rest come and learn learning is the pathway to understanding the more you learn the better you understand 
The things of God don't jump on people. Believers have to sit down to learn. Permit me to say, what I understand today, I sat down to learn it yesterday. You cannot become a mechanic without learning the way to it. You cannot become a tailor without learning. You cannot become an expert without learning, without commitment to learning. Today we have many lazy believers who go about from one person to another. Please pray for me. Please pray for me. Please pray for me. Sit down and learn. Learn to find rest to your soul. Where we are today is not magic. No, it is learning that brought us to where we are. And it's my prayer that as you learn, the Lord will open your eyes of understanding. If that prayer is for you, say louder, amen. Quickly, among several ways we've been learning, we want to begin this morning by showing to us how God leads his people. And we have five major ways we want to consider quickly as we proceed. Number one way by which God leads us is through the voice of God behind his word. The Bible is the voice of God in a written form. The book you are holding in your hand, even though it's written black and white, but behind it is the voice. The voice. So you are holding in your hand the voice of God in a documented form. How do we know that? Isaiah 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. So this book is the book of the Lord. It's not the book of Moses. It's not the book of David. It's not the book of Paul. It is the book of the Lord. And read. And as you do, no one of these words shall fail. None of them shall want her made. For my mouth, this is God speaking, my mouth commanded everything here. The mouth also the voice because voice comes out of the mouth. So we can say, for my voice had commanded it and my spirit had gathered them. So behind the word, the written word is the voice, if you like, the spirit of God. The scripture also said, all scriptures are written by the inspiration of God, by the inspiration of God. Second Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration. Now, the voice, the spirit, inspiration, they are saying the same thing. The voice of God. Now, we have the letter of the word and we have the spirit of the word. The letter is available to all, but not everybody assesses the spirit second corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 the letter who also has made us able ministers of the new testament not of the letter not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter can misguide you it can kill you but the spirit of the word the voice in the word gives life gives direction so
So every time you read the word, the Holy Spirit comes to guide you through it. That's why in Psalm 119, verse 105, thy word is lamp to my feet and light unto my path. The spirit of the word lightens you, opens your eyes to see what to do, to know what to do. Say loud amen. amen. So, listen to this. If you are not given to the reading of the book, you are missing out in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Seek out of the book. Read the book. Because through it, the Holy Spirit, the author of the Bible, will guide and lead you. Say loud, amen. amen. So read the Bible daily. Study it frequently. Because through it, the Lord will be speaking to you. Now, when Jesus was talking to his disciples in John 16, 13 and 14, of course from 12, he said, there are many things I have to say to you, but you cannot understand them now. Then in verse 13, he said, when the spirit is, the truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but also he shall hear, that shall he speak unto you. Verse 14, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show you to you, to you. He will receive the word and show it to you. He will also remind you of the things which he has said. Number two, how God leads us through the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit. Today, God still makes his people to hear his voice. John 16, 13, 14 again when the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth he shall not speak of himself so he's a speaking spirit he will speak and whatsoever he sh you shall hear whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak he will speak and he will show you things to come may everyone's ear be open to hear him speak today Jesus said, as I hear, as I hear, so I speak. John 5, 30, as I hear, Jesus kept hearing the voice. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, as I hear, from today, you'll be hearing. The voice of the shepherd, you'll be hearing. We call this the audible voice of the Lord. You look around. Where is the person speaking? Is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? He will speak to you. If you're a student, he will speak to you. Study this thing. If you are going for interview, he will speak to you. The things they will ask you. And even if you don't know it, you sit down there, they are asking you, he's speaking to you, the spirit of your father. Say loud, amen. amen. Sometimes even to eating, he speaks. There are things he told, he speaks to me. When I want to eat something or drink something, he says, stop there. Don't take that. Poison. Going on your journey, he speaks to you. Stop. Go back home. number three way now a few scriptures to add to what you um, have written down john i mean acts chapter 8 28 to 29 acts 28 he was returning and sitting in the chariot he read the, the, the book of uh yes, yes. and then the spirit said unto philip the spirit spoke audibly to philip go near join yourself to this chariot Please don't take anything casual. You want to rent a shop, the Spirit says, stop. You want to buy land, the Spirit says, stop. You want to buy a car, you like the car so much, but the Spirit tells you, 
don't buy it pastors if you are here sometimes you want to preach a message you prepared very heavily for it and the spirit tells you don't preach that message it is not for now you will scatter the church if you preach it our church was going to move from um, and worry me to a place where so much money has been spent in Narai. And the Lord spoke to his servant, if you go to that place, that will be the end of your ministry. That will be the end of this ministry. If you step in there, maybe all of us who are enjoying liberation blessing today will have not have assessed it. The ministry will have died. May you hear clearly the voice of the Lord. Put your hand on your ear. I command that every spiritual deafness that has led you into the pit or to the holes be healed right now. Some people fall into sin of adultery because they will not hear. Don't go. Don't talk to that woman. Don't talk to that man. Don't visit that man. You will never go to wrong places again in your life. <laughs> Acts chapter 10 verses 19 to 20. God showed a vision to Peter. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said, the Spirit said. Acts chapter 13 verse 2. As they were worshiping the Lord, the Spirit the Holy Ghost said the same thing. Now, number three is through the witness of the Spirit. Now, there is the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is audible. And there is the inner witness of your spirit. The inner, the audible, the inner. Your spirit connects to the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 16. The Spirit Himself, that is the Holy Spirit. Look at the S is capital. Everywhere you find capital S is talking about the Holy Spirit. The Spirit Himself beareth witness with our human spirit. So you have the witness of the Spirit. That's why your spirit must be alive and well. Proverbs 20 27. The Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Your spirit is like candle. The Holy Spirit comes with fire on that to lighten you. The Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit. So your spirit must be alive and well to catch what the Spirit is saying. You cannot afford to live a carnal life. You have to be spiritual to connect the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. Paul and his companion. In their journey when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Spirit they were stopped can you see that they were going to preach they were going as the Lord sent them but the Spirit said stop not now not there God's servant Bishop Oedipo was going to send the team of pastors to go to Japan because he went there and there was enormous name and the Lord said to him even though there is a need in Japan you are not the one I'm sending there sometimes we think we want to help God stop and then the following verse in verse 7 after they were come to miss here they are said to go into bitner but the spirit suffered them not the spirit did not permit them the spirit did not permit them there are certain investments you want to make the holy spirit said no feasibility study beautiful you want to build a factory you want to help people and the spirit said no no so we have the audible voice and we have the inner voice which we call 
the witness of the spirit number four through heavenly vision that is the things that he shows he speaks and he shows remember john 16 13 and 14 is the speaking spirit and the showing spirit look at the later part and he will show you he will show you he will speak to you and he will show to you this is what we call heavenly vision which may be open vision or night vision open vision in form of a trance as it happened to philip or rather happened to peter in Acts chapter 10 verses 9 all the way to 16 he went into a trance on the morrow as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour and he became very hungry and would have eaten but while they made ready he fell into a trance that is in between sleep and being awake that's what we call open vision your eyes are open and god shows you something or you are in a trance and he reveals to you things to come and then we have the night vision which is dreams given by god now be careful there are people who dream negative things all kinds of dreams i saw myself in accident that's not from god and if you think it's from god what you should do is not to announce it is to cancel it cancel it praise the lord stop announcing the devil when i dream my dream comes to pass negatively so and you are celebrating it when you should cancel it let me quickly say this don't look for dream if you need it god will show it to you is somebody saying amen to that you are not the one to tell god how to speak to you he knows better don't look out for dream don't look at, this is where many people run into trouble because listen to this satan does not have access to the voice of god but he can have access to your dream because the dream comes through the channel of the mind that's why when you wake up you remember the dream because it came even though by the spirit but through your mind don't look for dream if you need one god will give it to you and if you dream you woke up you can't remember the dream don't bother your head god will not show you a dream that you cannot remember don't bug your head don't bug your head looking for it thinking of it because you may be looking for trouble without you knowing say loud amen, amen. the lord appeared to paul in a vision acts chapter 9 verses 6 to 9 as he was on his way to damascus acts 9 6 to 9 and 26 verse 19 he made reference to that dream the lord appeared to him in a vision and showed him what to do and number five quickly how god speaks to his people he speaks to us through god sent prophets or if you like through his servants it may not just be the prophet it may be priest it may be your pastors amos 3 7 the lord does nothing except he has revealed it to his servants the prophet he revealed his secret now you see we are in different levels there are things you cannot see as baby in christ there are other things you cannot see as a child but god uses older spiritual anointed vessels to reveal them to you that's why when you come to church there are things god will be speaking to you through your teachers you will hear the voice of your teacher from behind you saying this is the way walk it there you'll be hearing through the voice of your prophet so whenever you come to church you are listening to messages or you are reading books of anointed prophets or you are listening to their teaching don't just listen to be enlightened listen to be directed listen to be guided Luke 4 25 to 27 
there are prophets still sent to people such as Elijah Elisha and several others Israel was in trouble in the days of Jehoshaphat and the prophet word the prophet's word came second Chronicles chapter 20 verses 14 to 17 22 to 24 Paul the apostle was heading for destruction and one prophet called Agabus came up and took his cloth and tied it on Paul's leg Acts chapter 21 verses 10 and 11 and he said this is will be captured and dealt with if he goes but Paul disobeyed he took Paul's garden and bound his hands and his feet and said thus share the Holy Ghost thus share the Holy Ghost because Paul, even though the prophet was not listening, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owns this government and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And that was exactly what happened to him. So beware. Even when you are in counseling and you have been told, don't do that thing. Say, I'm a man of myself. If I do it, what will happen? Don't wait to see what will happen. No. Don't wait to see what will happen. You want to throw your wife away? You want to marry another wife? Secretly in your heart. And they told you, don't do that. Brother, don't do that. Say, no. By the time trouble lands, all your grammar will be ended. Say loud, amen. amen. So prophets still speak to us today. Now, how do you assess divine guidance? Number one, be spiritually minded be spiritually inclined be spiritually aligned renew your mind first corinthians 2 14 spiritual things are discerned by spiritual people but the natural man the natural man the harshly inclined man cannot receive the things of the holy spirit because there will be foolishness unto him neither can he know them because such things are spiritually understood spiritually understood romans chapter 8 verse 6 to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace and therefore in romans chapter 12 verse 2 he admonishes us that we should be com not be conformed to this world, but be re transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that you can be able to discern what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. You need a refined mind. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind you need renewal of your mind revelation chapter 1 verse 10 i was in the spirit on the last day and then i heard a great voice the voice of the holy spirit the voice of the lord as of a trumpet that is, the trumpet indicates clarity the voice was so clear we don't hear clearly because our minds are beclouded. So take away the cloud. Get spiritually aligned and connected. Say loud, amen. amen. How do you renew your mind? Two ways. By the word of God and by praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying. Praying. Remember? It was as Peter prayed that he fell into a trance. There is something prayer does to you many people think that prayer is only because you want to get things from god no prayer gets you spiritually inclined in prayer you spiritualize yourself in order to get aligned to the holy spirit people who don't pray are never connected spiritually prayerlessness disconnects you from god so pray Pray always to hear God always. Pray always to hear God always. In all probability, 
those who pray always hear call unto me and i will answer you and i will show to you the things which you do not know jeremiah 33 33 don't pray only in view of that material things you will get pray to be spiritually connected to god Pray always to hear God always. Say loud amen. amen. How do you assess divine guidance? Number two, have a genuine crave to be led. Be desperate for God to lead you. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. And you shall seek for me. And search me. And find me when you search for me with all your heart. With concentration. With desperation. You will find me. Call unto me and I will answer you. Show you greater mighty things which you know not. In my study yesterday... I saw that at 11 different instances when David prayed for God's guidance. Great leaders always pray for guidance. Lead me, O Lord. Who will lead me out of Edom? Lead me, O Lord. Lead me, O Lord. Psalm 25 verse 5, Psalm 27 verse 11, among others. He prayed desperately. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in the plain path because of my enemies. Lead me. Because when you lead me, I will not fall into their trap. All great men were guided men. Guidance always precedes greatness. Abraham the Great was Abraham the Guided. Isaac the Great was Isaac the Guided. Moses the Great was Moses the Guided. Exodus 33, 13. The number one prayer that Moses prayed. Look at that. If I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way. If you follow his way, you cannot miss his grace. Show me now your way. Show me now your way. Show me now your way. And God said to him, don't you worry. My presence will go with you and I will give you peace. I don't pray for things. Listen to me. I don't even pray for the anointing. I don't pray for anointing. Oh. I don't pray for power. I pray, Lord, lead me. Lord, lead me. Lead my mouth. The right word to speak. For how forcible are right words. Lord, lead me. Lead me. Lead me. When you are led, you cannot miss His grace. And number three way to assess divine guidance. Open up to the revelation of God. The word of God. We have said that earlier. Psalm 119, 105. What are the biblical proofs of being led by the Spirit? When you are truly led, how do you know? Number one, you will be pressure free. You will be calm. I mean, <laughs> people will be wondering whether you are in this war. You will be so pressure free, nothing is pressuring you. Anytime you feel you want to do something, you are under pressure. Check it. Relax yourself. Proverbs 3, 16, 17. His ways are ways of pleasantness. Pleasantness. And all his paths are peace. First John chapter 5, verse 3. Psalm 25, verses 12 and 13. For this is the love of God our commands, and his commandments are not grievous. His instructions, his voice won't put people under pressure. Psalm 25, 12 and 13. What man is he that feared the Lord? Him shall the Lord teach in the way that he should choose. He will guide them, he will lead them. And his soul shall dwell at ease. Things will be easy for him. Number two, proof of being led by the Spirit. When you are truly led by the Spirit, you will be having a state of supernatural joy. Joy. When God speaks, it creates joy. When the devil speaks, it creates heaviness in the mind. So don't claim it's God who spoke to you when you are heavy in your spirit. For blessed are they who hear the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Psalm 89 verse 
15 they will walk in the light of his continent first peter chapter 1 verse 8 joy unspeakable full of glory is what accomplishes accompanies his voice hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross now by the voice of god you are hearing this morning you will encounter destiny anew now there is what we call the mystery of predestination predestination it's a great mystery ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 6 god had blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in christ and verse 4 according as he has chosen us so me i'm chosen he has chosen you before the foundation of the world you know why you are here this morning he chose for you to be here say loud amen, amen. that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by jesus christ himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise and the glory of his praise grace wherein he had made us acceptable in the beloved no man can come except the father draw it him you know why you are here the father drew you he drew you he loved you and drew you say so may god loves me he drew you here ah when i look at my life i mean i was near non-entity if not absolutely so i didn't look like a child that will become anything near greatness but he had chosen me from the foundation of the world just guiding me leading me just tailoring my movement to where i am today the lord said to david i took you from among the sheep coat your brothers didn't recognize you your father didn't recognize you but i took you out of the sheep coat and i brought you into greatness because according to david because god likes me he likes me we understand from scriptures that every child of god has a glorious destiny and an enviable destiny in christ say with me i have a glorious destiny I say also i have an enviable destiny i am not to be pitied i am to be envied now it may appear people are looking at you with eye of pity today hey yeah uh, sorry Every... tell them don't pity me you will soon envy me don't pity me you will soon envy me don't pity me you will soon envy me say loud amen yeah. you need to carry envy mentality envy mentality you need to carry it romans chapter 8 verses 29 all the way to 30 very clear word for whom he did for no like jeremiah before i formed you i knew you don't say i'm a child i knew you take note of that jeremiah chapter 1 verses 5 all the way to 10 whom he did for no he also did predestinate to be confirmed to become like the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among the brethren jesus is our firstborn all of us are second born there is no third born Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them also he did call. And whom he called, them he also justified. And those he justified by faith, according to Romans chapter 5, verse 1, them he also glorified. If he called you, the ultimate of your end is glorification. So of me, my life shall end glorious. Oh, I didn't hear that very well. Why don't you tell two, three people around you right now? amen that's how isaac ended child of promise and you are the new testament child of promise genesis 26 12 to 14 isaac sold in the land he received the same year and hundredfold there are people seated here before this year runs out <laughs> amazing tumbling catapulting turn around for you in the name of jesus please listen to me i'm hearing the spirit speaking right now i'm hearing the spirit speaking right now that this particular service 
is to change your level to levels unimaginable this service today we catapult your destiny to a higher dimension this service today will lead your destiny into tumbling and tumbling tumbling and tumbling and tumbling and tumbling and tumbling, and tumbling upward tumbling forward by this service today i see you going forward i see you going upward now the spirit is telling me there are things you have labored for the last five years in the next four months before this year runs out you will be receiving minimum double of those five years it is done galatians chapter 4 verse 28 you are the new testament isaac what happened to isaac then because you are his brother now we brethren as isaac was are the children of promise he went forward the philistines envied him he stood out they envied him you are becoming the envy of your profession of your career as a student you are becoming an object of envy say very loud amen to that how do you realize your destiny number one as we begin to round up you must be born again we can't overemphasize that new birth is key is the doorway to god john 3 3 jesus said to that highly learned man nicodemus verily verily i say unto you that it, repeatedly very frankly i say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see he cannot know he cannot understand he cannot perceive the things of the spirit now this is very simple those of you who are pregnant you can't tell the baby inside you see this picture do you like it he cannot see why he's yet to be born can you see my finger baby answer me now <laughs> the baby said you're wasting your time <laughs> but when the baby is born you put your eye across the eye you put your hand across the eye the eyes are following the hand because now the baby can see if you are not born again you cannot see spiritual things you cannot see no matter what god is showing to you you are black out that's why you must be born again you cannot see the treasures which god has in store for you except you are born again the things of the bible and of the spirit will become like arabic to you you must be born again number two you must possess a genuine heart for god and the interest of his kingdom ah look for god not for things look for god your destiny is too big you cannot undo it but run after god and he will handle it for you there is no method i could have used to arrive at where i am today no because i know i cannot make it on my own let me pursue the one who can make it for me and according to scriptures john 6 33 seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and by his mighty hand he will make all these things to be added to you added to you i don't know where i can be working in any organization in this world that will give me material things that i have today no way that will pay me as much as god is paying me nowhere i have never met any of my classmates who is where i am today no how running after jesus running after god all these things many of them get what they get under pressure 
but I get my own under ease. They come to me. I don't look for the thing. I don't look for money. I don't look for dress. I don't look for car. I don't look for recognition. They come to me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Be an ardent follower of God. You are looking for promotion in your office. Your colleagues and contemporaries, they will floor you. They know the methods of the world to use that you cannot use. You better pursue after God. And while they are struggling to make it, sweating every day, you are sleeping in your house. When they come to tell you, you are newly appointed. Do you know there are believers who don't come to church on Sunday because they gave him dangerous appointment? Sunday morning, they promised they would give him job. They promised him they would take him somewhere in the state house. They promised him that they would take him to one minister or to one day somebody. And he left the church on Sunday. Abba. Why are you telling God to help you? You are pursued after men. Let the men help you. Make up your mind that no devil will be able to take you out of church on Sunday. No devil. What appointment? Appointment with who? Don't waste your time. Pursuing after men with legs. When your God can reach out to any room where they are without opening the door. Get addicted to God. And he will entitle you to the things which you are looking for. For I have not seen, nor his heart, neither has it entered to the mind of any man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. There are things in stock for you. You will just need to love God. Be a lover of God. Be an addicted follower of God. I have never met any man in my life that I will beg for anything. No. It's absolutely unnecessary. Be an addicted lover. Be a soul winner. Be a soul gatherer into the kingdom of God. I stand at the street corner in the marketplaces talking to women selling cassava, talking to women selling you know, in the grain, talking with them with pride on the behalf of Jesus. Telling them about Jesus. Tell them about the church. What are you looking for there? I'm looking for the will of God to be done in their lives. And he's working. He's working. He's working. Say loud amen. Yeah. It will work for you. Yeah. May you love God the way your spiritual fathers love him. Yeah. If you follow our path, you will assume the greatness where God has brought us into. Number three, remain open to the word of God for direction because every word of God we hear changes our levels changes our levels Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 32 to 33 the word of God changes our levels Acts chapter 20 verse 32 and finally be committed to a life of prayer we have said some things about that but also the life of praise the life of praise thanking God for where he brought you today in anticipation for where he will take you tomorrow don't despise where you are today don't let any devil tell you that you are nothing don't let any devil tell you that things are not working things are working did i hear you amen i said things are working get excited for where you are today in view of a brighter tomorrow on your way say loud amen I started pastoring a church of four people, including myself, but I have never been unexcited. I had bench for my bed with foam on top of it. Never lost my excitement. I had one coat, one shoe. I was a man of one shoe. Black, easily polished, but never done once. When I come out of the three-bedroom church three bedroom church the sitting room was the church i have my bedroom i have my study i have another room for guests who care to sleep on bench with kitchen excited i was reminding my wife a few days ago 
you could count the cups we have with flour. In those days, they have cups with flour. What about one, that one with blue color? And they say it has broken. With bench as our dining. Little table cooker, but with joy. No fridge, no air conditioner. The fan, very wonderful. You have to believe God, it won't fall on you. When you start the fan, waga, 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 waga. But always excited. Always excited. No microphone to preach. But always excited. One day I was so excited. As God blessed me, I bought a blouse for my wife. It was 30 naira then. That's what I could afford. And we're filled with joy. Full of excitement. You must live a life of... I have asked some people and said, I'm now 30 years, 30 years old. Nothing to show. Ah, nothing to show. And you are, you, are, you are blaming God. Nothing to show. I don't know why things are not working. Are you blind? You are saying things are not working? What about your breath that is working? You are wearing good shoes. Things are not working. Go to be a palo. You see people wearing bedroom slippers. Say things are not working. You are the one retarding your destiny with your that the, the way you look and the way you speak. There is no time things never work for me. Things work for me daily because according to scripture, all things work together to them that love him. I may not see it immediately, but something is working. Because God is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Somebody say amen. Be thankful to God. Be praiseful to God. Keep jumping and leaping in your room. Keep thanking God every day. Why? Destiny opens like a book page by page you can't if you have a book of 40 pages you can't jump to page 35 if you jump to it you will not understand it page one when you have understood it then god opens you up to page two when you understand then he opens you up to page three so patience is required page by page Life is in faces. Life is in sizes. Life is in stages. Even God said, little by little will I give it to you. Exodus 23, 20. Deuteronomy 7, 22. Little by little will I give it. 23, 30. Little by little will I give it to you. Little by little. Say loud, amen. Be inspired by those who are here, but don't jump to want to become like them. If you jump up, you come down. If you climb up, you stay up. Amen. Look at me climbing. I'm staying here. Another level. I'm here. Nobody can bring me down because I climbed up. I climbed up. I climbed up. But if you jump up, where do you go to? You come down. No matter how high you jump, you will come down. But when you climb up, face by face, in the journey of destiny, you stay up. Stay up. Don't say, oh, I want to be like Bishop Oedipo. Oh, what a great desire. But find out the journey, how long it took him, the places he went through, the mountains he climbed, which you have not climbed. The prayer and fasting he did, which you, have, you are running away from. They say week of spiritual emphasis. They say, what? Week of what? What are we going to do that day? They say, we are going to fast. Uh, okay, I'll come next week. <laughs> you are dodging. That's why you are missing it. Now, receive grace. Receive grace to be thankful. Receive grace to be patient. Give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Now, you are here this morning you've not given your life to jesus i am exhorting you allow me this morning i am begging you i am begging you for your sake run to jesus you see how everything has been done for you 
you are the one losing god is not losing anything the church is not losing the pastor is not losing why are you punishing yourself under the devil run for your life now i want to be born again i know god has a plan for me did you hear one person who was a drunkard he said god kept appearing to him in the night warning him stop that kalu kalu you are doing stop that drinking stop that betting things are running down for you there are people like that here this morning jesus is warning you he's calling you stand up right now no further delay jump up now come and surrender your life to jesus come and surrender your life to jesus wherever you are stand up and start coming to the altar right now carry your bag anything you come to church with and too tired of struggling and too tired and too weary of the things you are going through don't leave your telephone behind don't leave your bible behind if you come with a child don't leave any child behind anywhere you are in any of the homes you know you are backslidden you are no longer in tune with jesus and you want to return back home come right now give jesus a big hand as we receive them give god a big hand wonderful friends brothers and sisters come quickly young men middle-aged people maybe you are even an old man already and you saw things have not been working why don't you come to jesus to quickly redeem your life somebody's out there you are watching others have left you behind stand up right now make your decision run to jesus right now nobody ever regrets following jesus run to him run to him run to him run to him right now make your life count make your life count by following jesus make your life count make your life matter by following jesus thank you jesus a few more seconds waiting for those who are still coming before we pray i know there are still a number of people the devil is struggling to keep you down but i will not allow him this morning i will not allow the devil to keep you down this morning by the spirit of god upon my life by the authority of jesus with which i speak you know you are still there i know there are not less than 10 more people who are seated i'm talking to you right now by the spirit of god i command your spirit your heart to be broken to be convicted right now to surrender your life to jesus don't harden your heart jesus the master is calling you don't let the devil hold you down if you are still there come up right now by the authority in the name of jesus stand up now and run to the altar god bless you they are coming help me give jesus a big hand as we receive them right now thank you jesus as others are coming all of you in front here wonderful people put your hand on your heart and let's pray together pray this prayer with me loud say with me right now lord jesus have mercy on me i know i'm a sinner i need your forgiveness wash my sins away make me your child from today i believe in my heart i confess with my mouth that jesus christ is my lord and my savior thank you lord i am now saved my name is written in the book of life and i have power to follow god in jesus name amen please open your eyes you've made your decision you never regret it from the middle this way please go to the right and on this other side go this way god bless you everybody in the assembly clap your hands for the lord amen once again all of you who have been a part of soul winning and soul in gathering i pray that this week your rewards shall be gathered into your house a number of you have been doing wonderful things that we are not aware of i was amazed in the course of the week i was told some of our pastors are contributing money to bring people to the church during midweek service the church is not paying they just decided on their own and i know there are many people seated there who are doing such things here and there here and there helping to bring people in making calls on telephone following them up directing them to the winner satellite fellowship and all of that and putting your vehicle on the way to bring people from different places including your new convert now lift up your hand i decree that all your impute in this season of soul gathering shall be rewarded by god well the journey continues keep occupying keep doing what you are doing and the lord will help and honor you in jesus name good news for someone here this morning next sunday is our covenant day of vengeance covenant day of vengeance without vengeance there cannot be freedom without laying to rest your enemy you cannot have rest so come with expectation 
and oh what a joy it will be anointing for vengeance next sunday come with your bottle of oil pick your handbills which is already made available out there and quickly get yourself acquainted with the act of god don't forget also on wednesday we'll be focusing on praying vengeance prayer the communion will be served free transportation to and fro both from maraba end and from kefi end both ends are well taken care of and of course from our various interiors god bless and honor you in the name of jesus christ good news what of bible institute is running the august session we'll be having centers in goshen in massacre and in new Cairo. now those of you who want to attend the bible school you are wondering how will i get the form to complete so i can be a part of it for your information the fee is free to new converts and new members if you need the form you raise your hand right now they pass the form you see the ushers already showing you the form you want to attend the bible school and you should beginning from tomorrow only two weeks program you have been dreaming of attending it now the form is so close to you the form is so close you don't need to go anywhere to complete the form and we are also making provision for online registration i'm sure all of those details will be uh, made available to you you can check the screen i understand we have it on the facebook of the church and all of that uh, so please take advantage of it and be blessed in the name of jesus to god be the glory forever now we'll be having water baptism remember somebody shared testimony this morning who was drug addict drunkard as soon as he was baptized the spirit of drunkenness left him don't miss water baptism as soon as this service is over right now god bless and honor you as you do so all of you who are completing your word form that they are giving to you right now make sure you submit it before you leave the church premises it won't take you more than two three minutes to complete it so you complete it and they will take care of you uh you can call on any of the church officials they'll give it to you now that is the link for those who want to register online say with me thank you jesus finally before we stand up to bless the communion this is very very important first of all to parents all of us parents here please look after your children look after your children if you don't want to weep tomorrow look after your children spiritually and morally if your little children misbehave knock his head especially in church because we hear news that are some children belonging to some of us members who are loitering around the church premises they don't come into church building if you don't take care of them at home we will help you to take care of them here amen i was coming to church this morning i saw some of our students here put their hand in their pocket i, I went there remove your hand nonsense you don't know where you are some of them stood must sing right now children the bible says the the, the 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 devil wants to feed the heart foolishness is in the heart of the children it is the rod of rebuke that will chase them out many years back when we do me they told me one of my children uh, they knocked his head i said he must have done something wrong not uh, who is the person that knocked, how can you knock pastor's head pastor child no they knocked his head because he must have done something wrong. i didn't find out who the person was if he misbehave again knock his head and come and report to me that i saw him misbehaving and i knocked his head if you defend your children today not allowing him to be corrected you will weep tomorrow nobody will listen to you nobody will listen to you so from now if you are bringing your children to the church take them to the things where they will understand the language by which they are teaching them take them to children department we have anointed skillful teachers who will help you take them there let them teach them any other child find anywhere i will be there personally to deal with them look if you are a, a teen and you don't behave yourself well you are, nobody begs you to come to church this is not a church where we are begging people to come so we can count number it's a church where people are taught spiritually and morally discipline high level discipline that's what brought us where we are today if you won't take it oh yeah gafili gadoki amen 
Somebody say, leave them their youth. Don't tell me that. We are all youths before now. And we behave well. We are all youth. If I didn't behave well, I won't be where I am today. So don't tell me, leave them. It's their generation. What generation? Generation of nonsense. Nonsense generation. Some of you, your children are watching television that of bad things. And you can't, you can't stop them. You can't put off the television. You can't tell your child, stand up. Stand up. The children where you born with your picking like this. You know if you talk to the child, right? the child will kill you. If anything goes wrong with your child, God will hold you responsible. That's the summary. Oh yeah, Kutashi. Kutashi Moje. <laughs> Be on your feet and let's go. <laughs> Hallelujah. This communion table is blessed. Did you enjoy what I've said? Uh -huh. You have no choice. You have to enjoy it. Because it will help your journey. It will help your destiny. Now, all of our first-time worshippers, if you are here worshipping in this church for the first time, we love you. We welcome you. Wherever you are, I want you to come to the altar to receive pastoral blessing. All first-time worshippers, please take a step down to the altar. Come and receive the pastoral blessing. As they are coming, everybody in this assembly, lift up your voice. Father, help me to fulfill my destiny. Pray that prayer right now. Help me to fulfill my destiny. Give me a heart after you. Give me a heart after you. Give me a heart after you. Everyone coming to this church for the first time, please come to the altar. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. God bless you. We love you. We love you. Somebody begin to pray as I partake of this communion today. Touch my spirit. Touch my soul. Touch my body. Touch my spirit. Touch my soul. Touch my body. Touch my spirit. Touch my soul. Touch my body. Touch my spirit. Touch my soul. Touch my body. Touch my spirit. Touch my soul. Heal my body. Touch my mental faculty. Give me favor. Let the blood of Jesus speak in my life. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name. I bless this communion table this morning. You need healing, you are receiving it right now. You need deliverance, you are receiving it right now. The blood of Jesus was never misled. By reason of this communion you are taking today, you will never suffer misguidance again. Now, every other thing you desire, begin to tell, to tell God about it as you take your seat and the communion starts right away. All of our friends at the altar this morning, I want to welcome all of you especially on the behalf of the entire church. I have no doubt you have been blessed this morning and the blessing of God will go with you. Somebody came to this church last Sunday. Today he came to share the testimony. You too will come here next Sunday to share your testimony. When you are coming, come with your friends, your acquaintances, and all of your loved ones. We love you, and God bless you mightily. Heavenly Father, bless these wonderful children of yours today. Let it be well with them. Make a way for them out of no way. Let their future be fully secured in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Once again, we love you, and God bless you. Will you allow our church officials to take you to where they will take care of you? But meanwhile, you take your communion as you are going on both sides, to the right and to the left. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Choir, sing your song. You have just two minutes before we take final prophetic blessing and be on our way. Don't forget.